Patience is a virtue when you believe in who you are. Patience is where it's at. Welcome. You are now listening to the podcast of Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 48. Super happy that everyone is here, entrepreneurs, my shining entrepreneurs. This is Dr. Shine. And what we're doing today is discussing patience as a virtue in business. Now, many people, you know, first of all, has to have the discipline in order to pursue anything in life, whether it's leadership, whether it's just, you know, um, holding down a job, whether it is, because that is very important as well, because it pays the bills. So you got to get up and be disciplined, whether it is raising a child, whether it is something as small as making a decision to put on a calendar. You have to know what it is that is going to motivate you as an entrepreneur, a shining entrepreneur. Now, you can be a basic entrepreneur all you want, but when you shine and you shine brightly, my entrepreneurs, life becomes beautiful for you. Today is a great day in the city of Youngstown, Ohio, because we are officiating our community birthday. You know, many of us, they we go through life and our birthday parties that we used to have when we were younger are not the same. No one calls us and says happy birthday because everybody's doing their own thing, living their own life or moved on. And so a community birthday party is to recognize the community whose birthday is in the month of September. So if you are listening to this, you are definitely welcome to the Youngstown Community Center birthday, community birthday party today the 16th of September from 12 to 3. And we're located at 1413 Belmont Avenue in Youngstown, Ohio. So let's dive right into the topic, patience as a virtue. Why should we be patient in our business? We have 27 people in the chat. Grateful that you all are here. So, I want to see some reasons why patience should be a virtue in your business, Shining Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for hitting the like button and sharing this video wherever you see it posted. See, for me, uh, patience was not a virtue at the very beginning. I, I went in running through the gate. Like, I got this. <laughs> like the fool that would do that. <laughs> I was that one that didn't care. You know, I'm going to do it my way. You know. And yes, I thought I knew it all because of just my age. The fact that I had degrees and experience but I didn't have experience in the business in the field of leadership that I now have. So patience was the very thing that kept me centered and focused to make sure that I was even able and ready to take on the personification of an uh, entrepreneur. And at this time, there was no shining entrepreneur. It was just trial and error. So I want you to understand that. But one thing that I wish I had paid attention to that I want to expound upon you today, my shining entrepreneurs, is that patience is the virtue. That's it. Patience is good in anything in this life. And there are many reasons to work on patience. You know, um, it's helpful. It puts an empathy in the way that you handle your life, the way that you handle your business. It sets morals because there are certain things you would not jump to do just to do them to say, oh, this is what I'm doing today. No, it's not about patience. It's also not about 
making sure that others see what it is you doing you're doing. When I say shining entrepreneurs, it's not a bragging right. It's that I have empowered myself. I have self-motivated me. And this is what I'm going to do, whether anyone is watching or not. Being patient, even at a grocery store, <laughs> takes moral patience. So patience is especially vital to entrepreneurs because when you cultivate that patience, it includes creative entrepreneurship. But practicing it can be frustrating. So you're excited. You just launched this new project and you go in there gung-ho and you have no idea what you're doing, but you do have people that are around you to support you and what it is you're taking on. Or you just had a baby and your baby... You're a new mom, but your grandma's there, your auntie's there, you know, a godmother or father or someone is there and they're trying to teach you the right way and you don't listen. You don't listen because you're not taking on the value that your child needs you, your uh, business needs you. And in needing you, there are certain things that you're going to have to provide it that you yet don't know. It's a hidden, it's a hidden box. There's four boxes to communication. One is what the individual who's speaking wants to say. The second quadrant is what the listener wants to hear. The third quadrant is what the listener believes the what the listen what the uh communicator believes the listener is hearing and the fourth quadrant is what the truth of the matter really is so when we work on patience it is a virtue nonetheless because everyone is going to have their own agenda of why they hear what they hear i had a conversation with an individual who had a business. We helped her start her business about three years ago. We told her in the first year, your, your, your business is a baby at this point. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to provide input in your own business. We gave her the plan. She already had her mission. She already had, you know, the organization of her structure. The only thing she did not have was that ability to be patient enough to wait until her business became a year in its in its standing in order to do anything specific to it you know however in the meantime what she should have done and this is what I want you to understand shining entrepreneurs i want you to understand that what she should have been doing was putting investment in herself I'm sure she has made money from one year to three. And in each year, not only do you use a business account, because the business account is specifically there to show the flow, the input and output of financial flow. That's what it's there to do. It is not to save. It is to use for regular everyday business, con business finances. But a savings account, it shows that you are viable and that you have the potential and you have the finances from the business account to put into something known as a savings that is going to promote you. Say for a year. Say, for instance, if you're an Etsy store owner and you're online, your store in a month makes $1,000. In that $1,000, you take 10% of that which is a hundred and you put it into your savings account, everything else you rebuild on your store. When your store starts out at a thousand, it's going to end up at maybe 25,000. So now that's 2,500 that you could put into that savings account that you can't, you can't touch. If you have a goal that you've set specifically to have credentials, to have 
uh, something specific in your um, account so that you can move forward in your business, that should definitely be there by within three years. Whether you get a grant or if someone sponsors you or not, you can invest in yourself. And that's why most grantors provide that dollar for dollar match. Because if you can't invest in your own self, then you don't need a business. So anyway, back to patience. Patience is a virtue, yes, but waiting too long is not a virtue. Waiting too long is not a virtue. It's a procrastination, okay? So now let's go here. So let's look at some things that patience can help us do. Being patient for me. Um, and I see it. Yes, Kennedy. I Yes. Being patient stops you from looking stupid. <laughs> I love that because that is exactly the truth. It prevents you from making risks that you normally would not make because you're patient. So say, for instance, if I am a new entrepreneur or a new leader or say I just started college. And now I've been given this loan and uh, I have been given this opportunity to invest in my own business. Somebody just says, okay, I'll give you $5,000. But out of that $5,000, you got to pay a a negative residual. You have to pay back 50% in interest. Because patience is not there, you risk more of a opportunity to not be able to pay that back because you don't know how fast your your client base is going to pay you. So now you have a business that's going under because maybe that wasn't enough to start the business. Maybe that was only a portion. Maybe the people didn't, you know, maybe the advertisement wasn't as strong enough to get people to come to the business. Now you have to not only contend with the fact that your business is failing, you also must contend with the fact that you owe $5,000 times the 50% in interest. Patience is a virtue. (laughs) Entrepreneurs, patience is a virtue. Leaders, Patience is a virtue. Students, patience is a virtue. Family leaders, patience is a virtue. And it's a moral virtue too, because you're going to make the decision that's best for everyone. So it's stopping you from making crazy mistakes and hurrying up to the next stage can also leave you a little bit frustrated because mistakes are definitely going to be made. You are not going to dot all your I's and cross your T's because you're not looking at the future. You're looking at the present moment and shining in a negative way. You want to shine in a positive light so that others will definitely see that entrepreneurship is worth it. Take your time. Take your time. You also realize that patience is going to improve your, your uh, the way people look at you. The way people see you in your brand, you're branding your, your idea. Now, when they see you and they say, wow, look at where she has come from where I remember her being. She's come a long way. I talked to a gentleman the other day who is a contractor for me and he stated, wow, I'm watching your Facebook page over there at the Youngstown Community Center on Facebook. And you guys are always doing something because that's what we're, we're builders. We're doers. We're like the Home Depot, but not, (laughs) I mean, but that's what it's about, you know, being creative and entrepreneur like and, and motivated. You know, a lot of people have lost that motivation because they don't see the light. A lot of people look at finances as the burden behind why they choose not to start their business or allow their businesses to grow. But stagnation is the true reason because you can always find something to do in a business until you're equipped enough to make that 
ability happen for you. There's no excuse. And to an entrepreneur, you're very intelligent. You do have the the wherewithal to know that this is how it should be because you've already thought about it. You know, one thing about being an entrepreneur is you already come in the process with a vision. You already have an idea. And that is the most profound thing in an entire company is knowing what you're going to do. So when you know what you're going to do, it's so simple to just get it put in action. You find out what it is you're going to do. And sometimes people come to me with ideas like, this is what I want to do. And then here comes the process. I show you the process. Okay. And uh, for those who need to get in touch with me, there's my information right in front of you, but moving right along. So it improves your reputation and it builds your future. And then it also drives you to motivate yourself to do more. Patience is like, okay, well, while I'm waiting in the midst of this storm, seeing how this is going to project itself, I will be doing this. I'll build a portfolio. I'll get a board of directors. I will get a company to, you know, help me advance in my own brand. I will not compete. I will learn how to think on my own when it comes to my business style, when it comes to my leadership style, when it comes to the way that I rear my children in my home. I will do it my way. I will not compete, but yet I will be in my own lane, doing my own thing, working it out. So others will then at that point be able to use me as an example or no. I want you to understand that. Patience is the key. Patience is also going to make you stronger, tougher, because people aren't going to be able to come to you with any whim or any any excuse. You're going to see excuses before they get there. Patience is going to tell you, no, I'm not going to go buy this because I need to stay focused on what I've put into action for this week's, you know, um, for this week's purpose. For the money that I'm going to use for this week, I am going to go buy this, that, and whatever. And in doing that, it's going to project you to be stronger, willed, and not go out to the mall and buy these newer eyebrows <laughs> when you know that that goes to something for the business. It's going to make you have a, a tougher skin because you're going to you're going to decide if this is for you. It's going to give you patience is going to give you an appreciation to why you do what you do on a daily basis. When I walk into my locations and I see my vision working specifically, I see my individuals who live as a tenant moving forward providing them the necessary resources in order to move them from one position into another position, it makes me happy. When I go in and I see a business that I've worked with excel and they're exceeding, see, it's not about, <laughs> see, patience has taught me not to take it personal, if someone else's business under my direction is not doing what I have recommended. I used to take that very personal, but it's not me. It's that entrepreneur that's that wasn't even serious from the beginning. And a lot of times you could tell when people are serious when it comes to entrepreneurship or if they're just jumping on the ship because they hear that money's there. Now, if you just jumping on the ship because you believe that you're going to be a millionaire in a week and you got this good idea and you all that, your ego will get slapped down so hard, so fast. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> yes, Josh. 
You know how it is. You know, you were in that school. You were in that trade school. Remember years ago, you were in that school and what took place? You came out because you had that trade. You and I in that construction process, in that example, (laughs) and how angry I was at you for not being patient. Well, me too. You know, I could have been a little more patient with you. But coming out of that school and literally, you know, thinking you know it all, how do we put together drywall in a bathroom that's going to have steam? <laughs> These are the things I'm talking about. And Joshua, you you know, you know what it's about. And you feed off of that. And now you're patient. You're more patient. I even feel it in our conversations. The patience in how you project the way you do what you do makes me feel that this was worth it. To give you that opportunity within the practice to learn from experience. Yes, when you're on the job and you're in a trade and you have your supervisor or your foreman right there and then they give you that certificate. Now it's like you're the entrepreneur, you're the leader of the pack, but you don't have as much experience as you thought you did just because that that certificate has given you the wherewithal to know that you have confidence in knowing how to do it. But when you put your spin on how you do it, that's what makes or break your client base. You can be a landscaper. And if you just get on the riding lawnmower and cut the grass because you have a and a, a piece of equipment that allows you to do it does not make you a landscaper. A landscaper has a detail. A landscaper will not put their name on a lawn unless it is proficient. A landscaper will not cut over paper that is on the grass because it knows the landscaper has the patience and the wherewithal to understand that you cannot do that because you're going to either have to rake it up anyway. Why not pick it up before? There's a way to do what we do and patience helps us get that way. Patience helps us understand and appreciate. And, and accept the opportunities that come. The opportunities not just to make the money because it's an easy, quick thing to do, but doing a job from the heart, doing a mission or a project from the heart is the thing that's going to drive us to become greater later. And that's something we don't see as entrepreneurs because we're walking in the game as a young fool, not knowing what we're doing, even though we may have this degree or that degree and this experience or that experience, and we've been on the job 30 years, and we now, it's a different world when you project another leader onto the things that you used to do. There's a difference. Natasha, mm mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember, you know, being a part of your life at a very young age and promoting and processing how you were going to do your interior decorating. That was profound. That is something that you have to pay keen eye to along with what the dream of your client is. That is a dream that you have to mimic. And you have to see for yourself and you have to say, hmm, okay, matching up the favorite colors to, yes, all of these things are important. And when you recognize that you have the eye and the patience to deal with your client base, your life runs smooth. Mm -hmm. It runs smooth. So as an entrepreneur, who wants to shine as a shining entrepreneur, what I suggest we do is continue to look at our blueprint, go back to the drawing board of why we began our business in the first place, and then decide from that point how we're going to incorporate patience as a virtue. And because you're patient, 
entrepreneurs. You're going to grow. You're going to shine. Your People are going to know your name. They're going to know your brand. They're going to feel very good when they come to you for the advice that you're going to give them. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. I love all my wonderful shining entrepreneurs. You are validating and making me recognize the leader within me. You're empowering me to give these moral teachings and advice to you on the business forefront and sharing the highs and the lows through chronicles of experience, through chronicles of a nonprofit. We thank you so much for being here. And as always, we empower you to keep moving, keep moving forward, keep shining, keep believing in yourself and keep knowing that you have what it takes. And remember the biblical scripture, too much is given, much is required. And we'll see you next time.